It's Binghamton Now on a Monday morning. I'm Bob Joseph, and we are joined by the Binghamton School Superintendent, Dr. Marion Martinez, and welcome back to the program. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. And how are you? I am fine. Don't like to start off a program with a description that says the embattled Binghamton City School Superintendent, but under the circumstances, I don't think that that introduction is uh, inappropriate. No, I think that it's very accurate, actually. Um, I think we find ourselves as a school system in a very sad state, and I feel very badly about that, uh, personally and professionally. Is there anything that that in in the early days, the, the first months after you arrived in the city school district in uh, 2013, January 2013, just a little over three years ago, w- were there any signs that, that three years later that uh, the, the district's uh, teachers, the administrators, parents, students, and the superintendent would be heading to the point where we've reached? Well, it's very sad, but let me just go back and, and speak to that because I came to Binghamton in January 2013. At that point, upon entering the district, Binghamton schools were performing in the lowest 10% of districts in the state. So the situation that you arrived, the situation when you arrived was bad? It was very challenging. Now, many people will say, um, and I understand why they say this, you know, Binghamton, we don't want to be associated with urban districts, but Binghamton is not one of the big five, big five school districts, those being Albany, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, um, very challenging. But we are a small a small city school district, and we have many of the same challenges that the big systems have. I came here hired by the board specifically to be a change agent. And I understand what that means. That means increasing accountability, focusing on student achievement, uh, trying to lift the district out of accountability status. We are a focused school district. We had two of our schools drop into priority school status. Many people are upset at the graduation rate, which I certainly understand, but the graduation rate is uh, a complicated, complicated to understand. So when you see the percentages, what really are you looking at? So if you look at graduation rates from 2014, okay? We have a 26% mobility rate. So, And explain what that means. Where, when people hear a 26% mobility rate, what does that, that mean? That means students leaving our district and new students coming in, and that could happen multiple times. So what happens in the Binghamton City School District that may be uh, different from, from some of the neighboring districts is a, a far higher percentage of, of students are coming and going, that there's, there's just by the nature of being an urban school district, things are are much more chaotic, I would say, just by the nature. Well, I wouldn't say ca- chaotic, well, but what I would say is that their instruction is interrupted. So it's important to have sustained instruction. So when children are moving in and out of the school district, we don't know where they're going to necessarily. They come back. Sometimes that happens multiple times during the year. But let me just share this with you. If you look at the graduation rate in last year, uh, no, the year June 2014, of the 61% of that senior class who started with us as freshmen, 87% of them graduated. Is that figure something you're proud of? Yeah, well, I'm not responsible, I would dare say, for 2014, right. considering I only came in 2013. But nonetheless, I think that that is telling us something about the program at the high school. In addition, the first year that I arrived, 
I felt strongly, as did the high school administration and staff, that students should not participate in graduation exercises if they had not earned the required number of credits to graduate. And I, I felt strongly about that because of morale factors. If I'm sitting there as a student and I know the student to my right didn't fulfill all the requirements, why is he there? So we implemented a uh, policy that students only participated if they graduated, if they had earned the number of credits. But what we did do was we implemented an August graduation. So in that uh, June 2014, 87% who had been with us since grade nine graduated. And those who needed a little bit more time, it was 92%. Now, you need to understand that many of our students come into school already behind. So it it sounds reasonable that they need a little extra time to complete the requirements, 92%, okay? Uh, Which I think is pretty good. When you look at the June 2015, last year's graduation, of those 61% who were with us since um, ninth grade, 83% graduated in June, and in August, 89%. Now, that doesn't discount those kids who are not graduating. However, uh, there are some reasons for that as well, and I'm taking the time to go into this. In June 2015, the region's competency tests were replaced with a skills and achievement commencement certificate. So kids who had originally been part of the graduation rate now were pulled out. Our our students with disabilities graduation rate is of concern. Um, We, however, have had an increased number of students participate in our GED program, but students who graduate from our GED program are not figured into the graduation rate. We still have a large percentage of students who have chronic attendance. Hence, I went to the um, attendance policy and the grading policy. And I said, let's look at how we can tighten this up because if we are so punitive with the way we deal with students and we give them zeros because they don't come to school, because they don't participate in class discussions, if they don't make up their homework, if we give them zeros, I'm not saying they shouldn't be held accountable. Yes, absolutely they must. But if we give them so many zeros to the point that they can't possibly pass a course, then they're going to drop out and they're not going to attend. So you're suggesting that if students through um, lack of attendance dig themselves into a hole, essentially you don't want them to to find themselves in a hole that there's no way that they can dig themselves, get out, that they can extricate themselves. Exactly. Again, that doesn't mean that I don't think that they should be held accountable. But these are high school kids who need support, who some of them don't have the level of support that they should have at home. They don't have people to guide them through. And we as teachers need to help them do that. That's why I feel so strongly about advisories. And we have advisories that are working very, very well at our middle schools student engagement as far as the changes that you've just discussed generally what was the response to with uh, teachers and and administrators were most of the teachers and district administrators on board with these adjustments or did did many of them express concern that they didn't for whatever reason they didn't like these changes that you implemented well first of all i didn't implement those changes because the policy review committee is in the process of soliciting input and reviewing changes so that it then can go to the board because remember the board is a person who makes policy all i'm saying is graduation rates don't happen in isolation You must have things in place that then ultimately lead up to uh, and impact graduation rates. The other issue that I encountered when I came to Binghamton is our um, 
data warehouse was so faulty that I said to the board early on, I don't even know what the graduation rate is. Because again, and this is where it's much more sophisticated than you would think it would be on the surface. If a student leaves our high school, leaves our high school, moves out of Binghamton, we must track where did that student go? Did that student enroll in another high school? If we fail to track that student, then we continue to own that student. And ultimately, that student will be counted as a dropout and go against their graduation rate. And we just didn't have the oversight that needed to be in place to monitor where those students went. Is the oversight now in place? Yes. Is it sufficient? Yes, it is. So what, and, and I know that this isn't going to make people feel particularly good, but in my mind, I'm looking at this graduation data this year as the baseline. I came in 2013. I'm not going to step away from my responsibilities as a superintendent. Obviously, I am totally responsible, and I accept that. However, when you come in 2013, what level of responsibility do you have for the 13 or the 14 if you haven't had an opportunity to examine those elements that so greatly impact the ultimate rate? Now, it's not good. It's not good, and I'm not saying it's good, but I'm saying we need to look carefully at those areas that impact it so that we can improve it. Now, you as superintendent, and, and obviously you've, you've given a lot of uh, very specific information that, that perhaps a lot of listeners were not familiar with before you outlined this, but even though you've been superintendent for just over three years you still will agree that the buck stops with you oh when it so does yes absolutely it does but just remember that we are involved in a change process and there are people who study change theory understand that um, you go through various stages and we are in the transition stage right now and the transition stage means people are unhappy they're not feeling comfortable with what they knew. They're asked to do things in a different way. Um, and that doesn't feel good, so they, they get upset. We, in my opinion, must stay the course. We are also required to implement accountability in accordance with the New York State and federal law, with the No Child Left Behind, the accountability reform agenda of the state, and now Every Child Succeeds Act. If we continue to keep our focus, our students will be positioned to perform at higher levels. We'll see an increased graduation rate also. But let me just say one thing. Okay, everyone is focused on the, on the graduation rate. I understand that. But of those who graduated last year, 115 students were enrolled in one or more IB courses. 103 honor students had a had a graduate had an average of 87 or higher. And our seniors were accepted to over 100 different colleges and universities, including Princeton, Brown, Harvard, and Cornell. So again, I'm not trying to sidestep the graduation rate, but I'm saying some really fantastic programs are in place at the high school. Certainly we can improve, but we're very proud of those students who go on to distinguish themselves. But change is difficult. There aren't any quick fixes. And again, something that Michael Fullen said that really sticks in my head, and that is change is a process, not an event. We are at the very crossroads of transforming systems. And over time, the benefits of these research-based strategies, we had three reports at last uh, Tuesday's board meeting from MacArthur, Franklin, and Coolidge. These principles reported the most amazing progress, not only with discipline, because and, and I focus on discipline because we need students attentive so that teachers can teach and students can learn, but also on our writer's workshop, on our guided reading. You know, we are making progress. Well, and as you know from, from hearing 
the outcry of, of parents and others at the school board meetings, discipline is one of the biggest issues. And, and, and admittedly, it's a complicated, very complicated process. But too many, in my view, too many parents have and teachers have, have said that in, in some of the schools in the city school district, the environment has not been conducive to a good learning experience with bullying and and in some cases students who threaten teachers uh, and and there it happens it it definitely happens and it, it, a lot of teachers have suggested that they're afraid to say anything publicly because they're very very much afraid of retribution they're afraid for their jobs if they go well, public first of all i would I, I have heard that, and I would like to know specifically who has lost their job as a result of that, because if we don't speak out, if we don't make our feelings known, I've, I go to um, response intervention meetings, I hear teachers speaking out all the time. That's the only way we can address the issue. Uh, I'm not going to say that we don't have discipline issues, but as part of our strategic plan and every school's school improvement plan, because we have spent over $830,000 as a district on professional development to improve our approach to students who feel alienated from the school system, we are trying to determine, is this intervention having an effect? And there are some challenging behaviors, and we certainly want to address it, but Many of these students, whether they're special education students and they're co covered under special ed legislation, uh, there's the Office of Civil Rights also, least restrictive environment. We are trying to work our way through this. But in no way do we want students who are dangerous or violent in our classrooms. Does the school district have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to violence? Because I've heard of incidents where people or students have threatened other students or maybe threatened teachers and they haven't been removed from the classroom environment. Well, you know, Bob, I can't talk in generalities. Okay, if I know the names of the students and I'm able to, to research that, I can comment on it, but I'm, I'm not going to comment on a sweeping statement like that because, again, a lot of the, what you hear by way of rumors are, oh, I heard this, I heard that. Okay, specifically, who is the student? What are the circumstances? And I work with principals every day on those issues, and I work with parents, and I meet with parents. But as a hypothetical, if a student at the high school threatens another student, uh, threatens to kill another student, is that person going to be kicked out? I'm not. I'm going to, first of all, be informed as to who is that student? If students make threats like that regarding other students, they should be removed from the high school program. Period. And there's no excuse for it because I've I've been told that sometimes w it, w when situations like that have come up, an excuse comes up, and I don't know who exactly who's provided the excuse, but essentially that well because of that student's home environment, uh, essentially that's that's something not unexpected well it may be due to that student's home environment but we certainly can't have students in any of our programs who are threatening other students or their teachers period our guest in the studio dr marion martinez the binghamton city school superintendent with the situation as it is with the, the teachers union and the administrators union going public now wanting your dismissal how how is it possible to continue going forward at this point at three years in and you you've mentioned the progress that you've seen but you've mentioned that it is a transition does yes. this stop or disrupt the transition that's going on well it won't interrupt my transition because i continue to pledge to work tirelessly with everyone, even those who are resistant to change, so we can institutionalize the changes that have begun. We've be, as I said earlier, we have begun to see positive results, and we need to continue that. But can you work with people who don't want to work with you? That's my job. I certainly want to. But it has to be a reciprocal 
situation where everyone is committed and i have heard this at board meetings you know i want to work together to address this and that makes me feel very hopeful have you considered resigning no at all you asked me a question i answered it no i have not i committed myself to binghamton city schools and i pledged to work tirelessly to see the change through, see ourselves through this uh, transition phase. Are you, obviously, this this is a week off for the the school district, and I I know going ahead toward the the holiday, you'll want to spend some time for yourself, but you also will have to I I'm sure continue to consider what what is going on with the school district and and what awaits when when the recess is over right well um i am aware of the criticism that both unions have lodged but i have not read anything that is a criticism of my work i think another issue that uh, and certainly the contracts of both the administrators and teachers are public i think the fact that i have come out very strongly on wanting to observe instruction in the classroom which i currently cannot do um upsets many people but i don't know where you can work where your supervisor cannot see you in action and it really does hamper my ability to determine where we are in the rollout of these strategies but as it stands right now i currently cannot observe i cannot walk into a teacher's classroom sit down and do an observation and you feel you should have that right as a superintendent i do and that upsets many people do you think there's any chance of that changing i, I don't know all i can tell you is relating back to my first as to my experience as a first year teacher in uh, a little town south of Albany the superintendent came in to every teacher's classroom every non-tenured teacher's classroom and observed a minimum of once a year and I would like the opportunity to do that and provide feedback positive feedback and help uh, bring to bear additional supports that maybe teachers are not currently getting but it would give me a different idea of how we are rolling out these strategies here's a question on twitter and it's it's about something not specifically with respect to just the the, the general turmoil but it, it it came to a head in in the last two or three weeks and that's about uh lead contamination that showed up in in some of the water sources from test in 2013 and somebody tweeted she she um or this person is under the impression that the district or you withheld the test results that showed lead contamination in the schools and i know you've addressed this previously on the program i've that, addressed it numerous times but I, since this has come up on twitter i, I want to give you an opportunity because there there is that impression among some people that the test results had been withheld and they also want a commitment to make sure parents are notified in a timely manner moving forward mm -hmm. well first of all um in 2012 a um, contract was initiated to test the water. I don't, I don't know what that was all about, uh, but when I began reading about Ithaca, I asked the question, when was the last time water was tested in Binghamton City Schools? Now, just to remember, there are no state and federal requirements to test the water. So our director of maintenance found a report. It had no recommendations attached to it, and there was no follow-up. In the absence of not having any of that information, I thought it was critical to immediately go to the sources that were above, turn off all the water uh, to those areas and do testing. We did testing with um, Jennings Environmental. We requested expedited testing so we would get it back as soon as possible. And uh, we committed even though we have no legal requirement, we do have, in my mind, a moral requirement to test every three years, and I have put that system into place. 
So you believe the response has been appropriate? Absolutely. Getting back to the general situation now, going forward with the two unions having done what they've done at this point, do you feel that you have the support of the Board of Education president and the members of the school board? I don't speak for the board. so no, I'm, 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 I'm asking not, what, you, what not, you believe. I am not speaking for the board. But what's your impression? I'm not asking you to speak for the board, but as of this time, on March 21st, do you believe that the majority of the school board members support keeping you on as superintendent? I am not going to entertain that question. That would be more appropriately asked of the board. That's very presumptuous, and, and I'm not going to answer it. Do you think they'll keep you on? I have a contract, and you can review my contract to see the circumstances and the alternatives that they have. The contract runs through June 30th, 2018. Yes, it does. Yet if they want you to leave sooner than that, would they have to buy you out? My contract is very specific as to the terms. But that could happen. It, absolutely. That's why we have contracts, to give people options. We talked about this during our last conversation about the possibility that this situation, as unsettled as it is and as difficult as it, as it is, about the possibility it's going to wind up in court. Do you think it will? I don't know. All I know is that I was hired to be a change agent. I have implemented research-based strategies and techniques that can lift student achievement. I've also been very active in the community. I've reached out to people. I've attempted to give people who previously did not have a voice and did not participate in the system an opportunity to do that. And um, I also have received some criticism because of breaking down the subgroups to report on progress. That is covered under No Child Left Behind and Every Student Succeeds. We're required to do that. Do you have any regrets of anything you've done since you came to Binghamton as the superintendent? Anything you would have done differently? I think it's always important to be reflective about what you did do. I understood when I came to Binghamton that the lift was going to be very heavy, that people were very ingrained in what they were currently doing. And I understand my dissertation, in fact, is on the change process. I know how difficult it is for people to change. Do you believe that you are the best person to continue to lead the Binghamton City School District at this difficult time? I feel that I'm a very knowledgeable person who's had considerable experience in doing work like this. And whether I'm the best person is up to the board to determine. But you still want the job. I am still superintendent. And you intend to be back on this program? If As you invite me. You will be invited back. <laughs> I have, I think, every month since I arrived in the city. And I appreciate that. Absolutely. Especially at times this, this was not something that I, I think anybody exa exactly could foresee. Exactly. Dr. Marion Martinez, Binghamton School Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you.